Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we're in Los Angeles, California at the Society of Thoracic Surgeons Conference. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Vaughn Starnes, who is the Surgeon in Chief of Keck Medicine of USC. Dr. Starnes, we're here at STS talking about the Ross procedure. It is great to see you again. Likewise. Yeah. Likewise. And, and so everybody knows nearly two decades ago, this man performed a successful Ross procedure on me. Mm. Since then, I've gone on to get married. I've had a child and I have returned to all of the life activities that I love, including scuba diving and wow. traveling the world. And so I can't think of anybody better to have this conversation with and learn about your 30 year experience with the Ross procedure. So let's start. Dr. Starnes, how many Ross procedures have you performed and why did you bring it into your practice? Well, Adam, I've uh, been in practice uh, with the Ross procedure since uh, 1992, uh, when I moved to Los Angeles from Stanford. And uh, I brought it into my practice because I just felt like the quality of life after you did a Ross that you gave back to the patients would be exceptional. They didn't have to be on a blood thinner. Uh, after recuperation and after a period of four to five months, they could return to do anything they wanted to do. I embraced that. Uh, I've been doing Rosses ever since, and my practice now is a little over 650 Rosses that I've completed. And it's really been rewarding to follow these patients long term, like yourself. And I have some patients out 30, 32 years now. Well, Dr. Starnes, you have embraced this procedure and empowered folks like myself to have such a great life, so thank you for that. There are people in our community who may have never heard of the Ross procedure. Can you explain what it is? Sure. Well, Donna Ross in 1967 came up with this operation. During the Ross procedure, we uh, obviously put the patient on the heart-lung machine, and then we stop the heart, open up the aorta, remove the aortic valve, and then we take out the pulmonary valve and move it over into the aortic position. And then we reestablish the pulmonary valve, usually with either a human or maybe a porcine or pericardial valve. Dr. Sarn, it's fascinating. I'm curious to know what types of aortic valve disease does the Ross procedure treat? Yes, it's, it's evolved over time as we've gained more and more experience. Uh, right now, I would say patients with aortic stenosis primarily are candidates for the Ross procedure. Those are patients with calcified valves a lot of them have bicuspid aortic valves. We used to think that patients with uh, dilated aortic annulus or regurgitation were not great candidates, but now with our inclusion technique, we take on those patients also. So it now really is a valve replacement for all types of aortic valve disease. Dr. Starnes, it's great to hear how you are using the Ross procedure for different types of aortic valve patients. Is this procedure more complex than other forms of surgical aortic valve replacement that might include a mechanical or a bioprosthetic valve? Uh, yes, Adam, it's very, uh, very different. Uh, in a standard, say, a mechanical valve replacement or a pig valve replacement, you remove the leaflets, you do nothing to the root, you don't take out the coronaries, you simply take out that diseased valve and insert a prosthetic valve in place in sewing in the annulus, you know, 15, 16 interrupted sutures, put the valve in, move it in, close up the order. Pretty straightforward. With the Ross procedure, you actually do a root replacement. So you take out the valve, you take off the coronaries, and then you move over to the right side and you take out the pulmonary valve. So you transect it at the level of where the pulmonary bifurcates, and then you make an incision in the right ventricular outflow tract. And then you, as I say, enucleate that valve from the right ventricle. And in doing so, you got to avoid the left coronary artery, you got to avoid the septal perforator. So it's, it's very much a complicated operation. And then you move the pulmonary valve over, and then you sew that in the aortic annulus like you would a standard valve, and then you reimplant the coronaries. And then you go back over to the right side and reconstruct the right ventricular alpha tract. Dr. Starnes, wow, this is very complex. I'm sure some patients are wondering, is this something that can be done minimally invasively? No, it's not. It's a standard uh, open sternum operation because you have to have good exposure both of the pulmonary side and the aortic side. So there's no minimally invasive approach to this that's safe. 
Dr. Starnes, what are the patient advantages of the Ross procedure? So the patient benefits of the Ross procedure, number one, you keep your own tissue so it can repair itself. It's got superior hemodynamics, no lifelong need for blood thinners, possibility of a single operation, uh, less risk of infection, and in young adults, particularly children, the potential for growth. Dr. Starnes, those are a lot of great patient benefits. Can we dive deeper into the survivorship and the durability of the ROS? What's the latest research coming out about the ROS? Great question, Adam. One of the things that after you've been doing it for 30 years, you learn things about it you can improve upon. Uh, one of the great things that we've found now by following these patients is that survivorship equals that of the general population. If, if a patient 10 years ago had a mechanical valve or a, even a pig valve, uh, unfortunately at 15, 20 years, 15 to 20% of them are no longer with us, they've died. That is not the case with the Ross procedure. They have survival benefits that equal the general population. The other thing we've known or we've discovered is that with the uh, Ross procedure, the autograph can dilate and it can become leaky. So now we support it either at the annual level or even doing a total inclusion. And that's, that's really eliminated almost the failure point of the Ross procedure, which used to be dilation and regurgitation. Dr. Starnes, I love hearing about the innovations and the improvement of durability of the Ross. I'm curious to know, when it comes to the outcomes, can you share with the patients, what have been your outcomes for patients with the Ross? Well, number one, uh, mortality rates is close to zero. Uh, I don't think we've lost a patient in the last 10 years. So we're very proud of that. Uh, failure rates, we've got it down to about 3%. Dr. Sarnes, these are fantastic outcomes. And I have to ask you on behalf of the patients in our community, what is your number one piece of advice for someone considering the Ross procedure? Well, I think number one, if in your local uh, medical center, local town, uh, you need to ask the question, who's doing the Ross procedure in my town uh, or my city? Uh, how many have they done? What is their outcomes? I mean, all this is data that you should have on hand before you make a decision. Ross procedure is something worth traveling for. Uh, it's a great operation, it's great outcomes, and it gives you the potential to have a normal life. So I, I think traveling, uh, if it's not available in your, your local city or town, you should do it. Well, that is extraordinary advice for all the people watching this. And on behalf of the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, patients all over the world, and in particular my family, thank you for giving me back an extraordinary life. I cannot thank you. It's been great seeing you, Dr. Starnes. Always, Adam. And Always. And thanks so much for your help. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.